Welcome back to the Reptiles with Podcast. Today, we're going to be honorary reptile girlies. Heck yeah. Reptile girlies is a universal term. It's for everybody. Let's go, <laughs> dude. Eric, dying to your say dream that. come true. <laughs> he has been dying to say that. I hope you know. What, the reptile what? girlies thing? Yeah, he's been dying to <laughs> say have, that. That's a fact. For months. For sure. Yeah, yeah. For Tomorrow, sure. we're wearing our reptile girly shirts. We are. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys bring any shirts? <laughs> no. We did not. We should have brought some, but honestly, we just weren't sure if we were going to be able to do anything with them. So. Mm, and they're know. online. You can yeah. get them online. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Yoshi, get them online. You should know, girly. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're, yeah. Bringing, we're bringing some to Tenley, though. So. Okay. There you go. We'll oh, you going to Tenley, too? Yeah. Oh, y'all no, 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 sorry. Not Tinley next week. Tinley in the spring. Oh, yes. I was about to say. I'm like, important spring, clarification. Spring Tinley. Spring Tinley. I was about to say, you guys are on a trip. I really, right really wish we could. That would be no. amazing. We are not We are not superheroes. We, we said we could do, do one weekend, so yes. we did Animal Con. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Is this your first time? No, right? No, Second. we were here last year. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about it? It's great, honestly. I just love it. I was, I've been telling everybody, it's like we just saw everyone yesterday. And so it's really cool just getting to see everybody again because I can't even believe it's been a year. So it's yeah. been fun. Is that your favorite part, like meeting yes. other creators? Yes. Just getting to like bond with other creators, getting to know different people, getting to know other like people, you know, that are more zookeepers, different stuff, not even just creators, but like mm-hmm. people in the industry as a whole. Because that's not something we get to do when we're just like filming content in our rooms, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's usually we're so isolated with like just ourselves or even just us on our podcast, which is amazing to have another person to talk to. But when we get in a room with everybody, it's a whole different vibe. Yeah. Okay. I really enjoy the the panels. I don't know if you guys have had a chance yet or not to yeah. attend any of those, but those are one of my favorites because then you get to hear everyone's different perspectives, tips and tricks and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of those two. Yeah, I'm doing my first one today. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm gonna be honest. Are you nervous? <laughs> Is that a thing? Um. Oh my god. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I just have to, like, really think about like what the questions are. How I'm gonna how I'm going to answer them. And that's like, yeah, yeah. There's so many people with so many views all at the same time, all in one place. What you're it's saying like, is that you don't want to stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of. Because I have like mostly different views from a lot of people for sure so i have to like make sure i don't offend anybody because that's not what i mean either you know so it's like yeah yeah but i think that's like one of the beauty of the panels right mm-hmm. i was gonna say you that have all yeah. the different perspectives like because if your perspective is so unique and you know some people might not like it it's a good perspective to have because it's mm-hmm. usually a little different and sometimes we need different perspectives mm-hmm. so i'm all for that yeah, I just gotta gotta say it correctly. Solid. Is. That's fair. That's, that's fair. where I have trouble sometimes is saying things correctly how they should be said. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Like yeah, only part that I'm like, uh, here we go. Let's see what this is. <laughs> but um, I will say too, with the panels, it's a little tricky because you never really know what's going to be asked. Like yeah. we don't get questions ahead of time or anything, yeah. so you're just kind of like, all right, whatever goes goes. Yeah. Like we'll see. Yeah. I saw some. There was like some that. good back and forth last year. Yeah. Some people on like the smaller panels. So like mm-hmm. yesterday was the big you know, stage, but today they do the breakout rooms Mm -hmm. and there were some where people were going like, well, I think this, well, I think that. And you could tell they were like getting into Mm -hmm. it and the moderator was like, okay, so next question. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually, so Tino over there, Tino, do you want to run over here real quick? He, Sorry. He did this. Yeah. He Tino, exists. Tino's He's back. Here. He's well, here. Yeah. Hey, so hey. do you want to say the story real quick of what you did last year? <laughs> All right. I'm going to preface it with this. So I came as a creator, right, yeah. last year. Yeah. Tino came as my guest. Tino, Never uh, again. the first day was like, man, these panels, they seem so easy. I have, Tino also always has a lot of opinions about everything. <laughs> so he's like, there was a, an invert one, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, I'm going to jump on, jump so, on this, like yeah. literally just. So because of last year, there was also like scheduling conflicts. Uh-huh. So uh, I think Lights, Camera, Ants was supposed to be on two panels at the same time. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't show up. Um, so then I'm like, I asked, I think Dion, Dion was the one moderating. Yeah. And I was like, hey dude, what if I just jumped on this, pot, on this panel? And he was like, Sure, sure. He's like, I don't make the rules. Go for it. I was going to say, there's literally no rules to the panels. Yeah, no. yeah. Not there's at all. no rules. So I was like, okay, cool. So I get up on the panel and I'm answering questions, talking. First question that comes up, I was like, so I'm going to make some people mad with what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. I'm yeah. glad I did it. Um, and 
Yeah, I think a lot of the times it would be better if sometimes panelists were prepared for the oh, topics yeah. a little bit better. Like, not that it's any of your guys' faults, but maybe you yeah. guys see the topics a lot like, yeah. beforehand. Look into whatever you're about to yeah, say. Yeah, 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 for sure, for yeah. sure. Usually, also, the moderators for questions, too, because they're not given questions. Yeah. They have to kind of make, make up the their questions own questions. Up on the spot, yeah. So it's like, uh, I don't so, know. So props to the moderators, because yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's so a then, whole other ballgame. Uh, I was telling Yoshi, I was like, I'm going to get on this panel. And uh, he was like, don't you dare, don't you dare. Uh, so he leaves to go to another panel because he wanted to see, I think it was uh, David uh, mm. from Tiki's on another yeah. panel, on another thing. And I was like, I get on the panel and I message you. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and he runs you and I see like, it. <laughs> as I'm up there answering questions. It was hilarious. It was a great time. I love that. Yeah. And then he argued with everybody about inverts <laughs> and the ethics of wild caught inverts and all this stuff. And I was very uncomfortable. That's <laughs> it was really embarrassing. I'm just hey. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm fucking Made that's, it back this year, though, so yeah. it couldn't have been yeah. too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless of how you feel about that, yeah. that stuff is needed. Like we, we said earlier about how we need conflicting opinions. Yeah. It's stuff like that that needs to happen more to kind of get people... I don't want to say we need to get rid of like echo chambers or something like that, but that is something that's super, super common within the community. Mm -hmm. So true. People get, you know, very stuck in certain ways. And because of that, no one really gets to hear any other opinions. And specifically, like when it comes to um, like the wild stuff and even just keeper stuff in general, a lot of people that we've talked to, like off camera and all that stuff, a lot of time we share the same views. It's just not many other people are going to be out there projecting those views because mm -hmm. of possible backlash and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I think it's very important, especially if this is to grow and for us to actually evolve, we need to be able to have these conversations more often and not be afraid to get, you Yeah. Know, I'm not saying you have to fight on the panels or anything like that, but just like, don't be afraid of the conversation. Just being honest. The time. Yeah. yeah. You don't have it, all these like conflicts in people's heads. No one wants to talk about it. And mm -hmm. that's what causes the big beefs and all the stuff that kind of topples over because no one wants to talk about it. That's yeah. so you just true. sit down and talk. Well, yeah, you know, and it's, and it's how you approach it, right? Exactly, Instead of like yeah. pointing fingers or saying this is better than that way, being inclusive, which mm -hmm. is what we try to do on our podcast, right? We'll share our viewpoints and our opinions, but like fully recognize that there's yeah. more than one way to do something or there's different reasons for why you would do one thing over mm -hmm. another thing. Mm -hmm. So we try to frame it in a way that we can like yeah. open it up for conversation yeah. versus just saying like, our way is the, yeah, the I right think way. People are, especially with, when it comes to animal care, I think people get way too, they're quick to kind of like, and I get it comes from a good place. Like you want to make sure the animal's being taken care of properly. You want to make sure people are doing things right. But it also like zoom out first and mm -hmm. understand what's going on because it's like little things like that. If someone really big says something, it's going to change how they feel about the whole mm -hmm. topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that person, if that big person says something conflicting, yeah. It's just going to change how everybody views it and make things more positive. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm on a panel today. It's a networking for, I think it's like beginners or something like that. I'm on the same panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. And uh, it, it's funny because I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, how did I network as a beginner? And then I'm like, well, I just got on a podcast. We argued and we got people <laughs> upset at us. And then people were like, why did you say this? And I'm like, that's how I networked. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good awesome. one. That's yeah. a good one. I yeah. think too, I think too. Okay, so I've been trying to think about animal con if i was to run the business i'm mm -hmm. like how does it I, I don't understand it very well yet like is it profitable and all of these things right. and i'm like how do you get people engaged or like if a fan comes in and wants to meet you guys how can we get that fan to come back and stuff like that yeah i keep thinking about it i'm thinking of debates like debates how, yes yes like have a topic and it's like two people that disagree sit down i would watch that for hours that would actually be really crazy right that you would sit down and be like Oh, and then everybody votes at the at the end. Oh. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need to pitch this idea. That's not I a bad mean, idea. So in. Tell and me not. As long as there's a trophy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a trophy, just know you're getting messed up. Yeah. <laughs> but but honestly, that would even kind of solve what you were saying of like yeah. it would get the other opinions out there and it would <sighs> get people to get out of that echo chamber, get out of those like specific trains of thought. And, yeah. and that could be really cool. I'm not against that. And then at the end you hug. Loosen up. It's a required hug. <laughs> yeah. You, required you hug. must yeah. hug. Yeah. yeah. It, in order to receive the trophy, you yeah. must hug your opponent. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that way nobody fights after. But Don't say that. People are going to ask for hugs now, buddy. <laughs> you, whenever you fucking argue with people online. <laughs> Come and, here. I'll hug people. I'm not against hugging people, dude. <laughs> I whisper in their ear, like, I did it. 
<laughs> <laughs> I deserve this trophy. I won. Yeah. So let's talk about your guys' podcast. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, I don't know how many podcasts, Reptile Podcasts came out this year, but you guys are definitely coming up big time. Oh, I like what you guys are doing. We appreciate mm-hmm. that. Yeah, you guys are getting very consistent numbers, good topics. How's it been Thanks. like the response with that stuff? It's been great, honestly. Yeah, like, overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, yeah, really good. And it just, I mean, our main goal is really just to build a community for people and, you know, have all of that. And so I think that it's just, I don't know, it's going well. And we're, we're really happy with mm-hmm. our listeners and just getting to see people. And we recently did our first expo and we mm-hmm. got to see a lot of people in person, which is just like a whole other yeah. experience. So something that I saw you guys posted the other day was that you guys took some shirts and stuff like that. You know, all the expos that I do, that is the thing that I fail the most at. I always forget to take shirts. Um, Mm. Most of the stuff that we do is print on demand. Mm. So I'm always like, oh, just go buy it online. But people always come up to me. They're like, where are the shirts? Where are the podcast shirts? So that's something that we got to do. Yeah, step up, dude. What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, bro. What's wrong with you? No, people people enjoy having something in front of them. Not to say they wouldn't also buy it online, but also it's a little thoughtful of like when you're at an expo Mm -hmm. and you see a lot of these big price tag animals, Mm -hmm. a $25, $35 Mm -hmm. t shirt is a lot more accessible for people. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, I can buy a shirt versus like coming home with a a new animal. That is true. Yeah. If they want to support somehow but don't want an exactly. animal, that's the way exactly. to do it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It worked out well. We tried to do a couple different. We did had three different designs. One was just the logo. One was, you know, the reptile girlies. And then one was like a in my reptile mom era one, which oh, okay. we liked that one. And that one was our biggest seller because yep. it was pretty generic. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't a you know, giant specific. podcast logo, yeah. Yeah. which so it kind of felt like anyone could wear it or anyone mm-hmm. could grab it. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So. You guys want to say like your story of how you came to like, hey, I'm going to start podcasting. How did that all come about? It was actually Animal Con last year yeah. oh. um, that we like came up with the idea. So we did a quick little like teaser. So on my channel, Neptune the Chameleon, we did a quote unquote episode, a mm-hmm. little pilot of just keeping reptiles in an apartment. And I figured she like that's how we met yes. was through a whole exchange on Instagram of like keeping reptiles in apartments. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, hey, how fun would it be to have like a guest appearance on my channel and just talk about tips and tricks for keeping reptiles in an apartment. Mm -hmm. That was like a couple months prior to Animal Con. Then we were talking to Bill Strand from Mm -hmm. Camillion Academy, who's Mm -hmm. like been podcasting for years, right? And has had multiple shows, his whole network that he's been building out. Like, so I was like, hey, Bill, what do you think if we had like a girly reptile podcast? And he was like, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And you guys should do it. And we're like, how do we do it? Yeah, like we're we like, had, what do we do? We, we were had like, no what, idea. what equipment do we need? He's how like, do we do it? Do you know do what the RSS feed is? And we're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go back to our hotel room and we're like brainstorming and we're like, okay, are we like actually going to do this? Mm-hmm. Actually going to do this? Yeah. And then you were getting married like, a right month a, later. Yeah, right after. And so it's like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so then, but between Animal Car and last year in December 1st, when mm-hmm. we launched the podcast, we designed the entire logo, the name, the branding. We filmed multiple episodes, like the whole shebang. And then we launched December 1st. So yeah. awesome. about to be a year. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost. We're really close Mo. to a year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. It was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. What's like a long term goal that you guys have for the podcast? Oh, man. <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, I would love to get to a point where at Animal Con, we have like a live podcast booth set up. Mm-hmm. That would be a really cool opportunity if mm-hmm. we were able to get to that point. So that's right. for me, that's one of mine. What about you? Yeah, I I think like a lot of our goals we've achieved just trying to do more, right? Mm-hmm. Like building the community. I feel like we, we've done that, you know, being able to get some views on the videos, we've been able to do mm-hmm. that. But like really the whole intention was to build out a community of female like reptile yeah. keepers. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like every time someone comes up to us and says like, they feel like they're a part of something bigger or like feel like they're seen or heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what we sought out to do. So just being able to do that bigger and better would be yeah. the dream. And when we talked like one of the one of when you know after Animal Con we were like okay so what do we want the vibe to be? You know what's that and one of the things that we said was like we want it to feel like we're sitting there having a reptile chit chat which we do in the on the daily in our friendship anyway and we want it to feel like somebody just pulled up a seat and just joined the mm-hmm. conversation and that goal I feel like has been achieved. Yeah. And so um, like she said just a lot of them 
have been achieved, but I yeah. don't know if we have yeah. any bigger, better ones. In the what future. about you guys, though? What are some of your goals with the podcast? We ha- So this is the thing. Every year around this time of the year, I sit down with everybody. I'm like, all right, so what do we want to do? And everybody's just like, just keep going. Yeah. Yeah, just keep doing it, staying consistent. I just, same thing. I just feel like yeah. we've done a lot of it. Like, yeah. for me, it was the collaborations, and we've had, like, tons of the ones that I thought of having. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, it's like, oh, we did that. That's pretty cool. Other than that, yeah, I'm pretty I'd happy like, just talking. Yeah, I'd like for us to, I, we always say it every year, dude. We're like, we got to go to Tinley. We'll never go to Tinley. <laughs> I've never been to Tinley. But it's, it's one of those. It's like, it's like going out and, I guess, reaching other aspects. Because we have so many people here in Florida. So not, not that it makes us stuck, but more it's like it's very comfortable because we have a lot of access to a lot of You don't of really stuff. have to go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You guys, exactly. everything you yeah. guys kind of need in the reptile community is like right here. So I don't yeah. blame you one bit. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know? Like we've gone like Tiki's Geckos. We just drive down, yeah. go to Tiki's. It's two hours away. Chandler. Right Drive down, go to yeah, him. Yeah. Like it's just a very long convenient. Thirty minutes. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just very easy to meet up with all these people for the collaborations. That's why I feel like we already made that. Other than that, would be like numbers. Bring the numbers up. Yeah, other than yeah, that, yeah. like I don't know what else yeah. uh, we could have. Other than maybe like Tinley and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I don't really mind. Maybe yeah. hopefully you'll one day make it. I hope <laughs> one day, <laughs> one day, <laughs> one <trip>. day. <laughs> long, long Chicago's day. cool though. Yeah. Tinley is a good show. We're yeah. excited for the spring show because we get to see the Green River in so Chicago. St. Patrick's oh, Day weekend. Yeah. That's right. They it's, do do that. It's right there at that weekend, yeah. so it's perfect. They yeah. actually do that here also. They oh. do. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. we Tampa. could just come to Orlando <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and go to Disney again. Yes, there you there go. You. Yes. There you um, go. No, it's, what was he doing? He just yeah, he's just hanging around. Yeah, for, for anyone who doesn't know, monkey-tailed skinks are my ultimate dream species. So oh, shout out to Matt Baranak. He brought one for me to hang out with mm-hmm. today, and it is the best day of my whole life. He is so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. They're he amazing. so freaking yeah. cool. I can just stare at that thing They're forever. like giant tree sloths. Yeah. Like, they're just crazy. So insane. I know. Color. How was the uh, the live episode that you guys did Ooh. at that Reptox? Well, it depends which one. Because we did two. We did one mm-hmm. on Saturday and then one on Sunday. And mm-hmm. the Saturday one, we did try to do live, like stream mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But there was no Wi-Fi at the venue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it while I streamed it through my phone, like with cell service. And it worked, but it was blurry. Like the, mm-hmm. whole, Super blurry. the whole video. So the mm-hmm. quality wasn't there. So then on Sunday, we just recorded it like we didn't do normally for yeah. our episodes. So the visual like was crisp and so mm-hmm. that was really good but that was our first time and only time so far ever having guests on our podcast yeah. so that was completely different yeah different vibe for I us I totally messed it up <laughs> pretty much like the very first interview we were sitting there and I was so nervous and I didn't even realize and I just like shot right out of the gate with the first question instead of like doing an intro and I was mm. like I'm so dumb <laughs> <laughs> so but other than that I mean we we got it together pretty mm-hmm. quick but it was definitely new for us it was a new yeah. thing so it was fun but different yeah is that something you guys want to do like have more like guests on or do you want to stick to mostly you guys and every now and then I think we just want it to feel I we definitely don't want to do the like virtual zoom uh, like, yeah. aspect yeah, of it yeah. so I think that's like our biggest hang up with the guests is we want it to be kind of more in person stuff and so I think we'll probably you know do guests at you know expos shows, and things like that because yeah, our studio setup isn't there's no, no. room for, mm. it's, for it's, anyone else. It's the guest room in my house that is not well put together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so we, don't, we don't have the opportunity for people to come to our studio. Right. Mm-hmm. So if we do shows and stuff like that, I think we would definitely do for sure. future episodes in, in guest zone. Yeah. Having other people. Yeah. 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 I want to say you guys started like your podcast at the greatest time. Because oh. like, there's so many people that could have taken that. It was like, it was an open niche right there for you guys. Yeah. And anybody could have just grabbed that and you guys went at first, especially for yeah. girls. Because most of the podcasts, like, mm-hmm. it's... it's <laughs> Say what you're going to say, buddy. No, 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 no. <laughs> say it. Say, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find the words, okay? Yeah. Trying to find the words. Um, like, a bunch of dudes being dudes saying yeah. the wildest things. And it's like, yeah. I don't know. It's like most of the time it's not inclusive for, like, the girls. Yeah. So when you started, it made that whole group of people navigate towards you. And then now you have the audience of people that weren't even listening to any other reptile podcast because... They probably didn't feel welcome. They couldn't yeah. relate. Yeah. yeah. And now you have a whole different vibe from everybody else. Because it's yeah. also not like 
there's a whole bunch of podcasts out there that are like ball python specific or this mm-hmm. specific or that specific, which makes their audience even smaller, mm-hmm. kicks a whole bunch of people out. Ours, I'm loud, I'm cussing, I'm doing all this <laughs> stuff, yeah. right? But then you guys are like still multiple topics and different things, but you're also a lot more calm and you're more welcoming to like female and mm-hmm. also like younger people. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you just grabbed a whole group of people that did not have that before. Oh, thanks. So appreciate you guys it. Good, we really appreciate that. Appreciate it's it. also like you said, uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of guys, but it's also a lot of breeders, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also like for us, like we're pet keepers. You know, it's like I like listening to breeder stuff because I learn a lot. But it's a different perspective. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, you know, it, I think it's helpful because having, you know, new people that are coming into the hobby, like you said, like we want them to feel welcome and, you know, see the pet keeping perspective as well as the breeder perspective, but there's lots of the breeder's perspective out there. Yeah. So yeah, that and was it, part of it. It's enough of it. And everybody no. shares it. And at some point, I bet like some other podcast will come up and it'll be very similar to you guys because yeah. you will inspire yeah. them. Oh, I'm sure. And then you're going to become, you're going to start this whole other community. But yeah. Oh yeah, the there's already another girly rap There's already, podcast. we were like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Wait yeah, a minute. And yeah, they will pop yeah. up just oh, like for that. Sure. I used just to like get that. a lot at the reptile shows, um, you know, people that listen to this podcast mm-hmm. and they would tell me, they're like, oh, I wish there was like, uh, like a woman equivalent. I I wish there was something like that. So that's why oh. when you guys started, I was like, I got to, every time, every opportunity I get, I'm like, the wild type podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah. You guys were one of the first people to kind of like, honestly recognize us and mm-hmm. give us a little bit of a shout out. Yeah. So much appreciated. That Man. was, that was really, we appreciated yeah, that what's a lot. Your, so you guys um, did that episode when we like had recently just come out with our mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. and gave your initial first impressions. Obviously some time has passed. Mm-hmm. Do you, has your impression of our podcast changed? at all over that time frame? I think uh, it, it stayed similarly like going up because of what it is that you guys are doing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like from the beginning it was like, oh, this is fresh, this is new. Yeah. And you guys have stayed at that. Yeah. You know, I feel like you guys are still like... You guys keep getting better. And, yeah, it's, you know. it's been a year but it still yeah. feels like you guys are starting because every time you put a yeah. podcast it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you run out of things. We yeah. got a list. Oh yeah, <laughs> we we have a shared we have a shared a, note. We draft stuff in that, and we cross things off. We and don't do none of that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just send memes and then out of the memes. No 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 no. no. I'll, this is how it goes. <laughs> I'll send. These are the topics, and then Tino over there because he's still in the group chat. He'll send forty thousand reels a day for us to watch. So all of my topics disappear. Get lost. Uh, disappear. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we the basic. <laughs> the basic ones we we always end up, but yeah, yeah. I think you guys like it, it. You can tell there's more growth there for you guys because every time yeah. uh, you guys because I a lot of times I just watch the clips you guys post and I'm like yeah. they still got stuff to like yeah. talk about. Like oh, yeah. you guys yeah. go into depth with things that like sometimes I think about to myself, not as a podcast, but to myself, and I'm like I wonder how this people think about this because I also yeah. do this, and then you guys just put it out, and I was like God. Damn there it is. Yeah, there, <laughs> there it is. is. Like whenever you guys talk about like social media, affiliate marketing, like whatever, like yeah. within those things, it's like oh, people out there would want to know that, especially yeah. as like pet keepers. Yeah. Because pet keepers don't know that if they use social media, which they want to, they can make some money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you guys end up telling them, hey, this is how we did it. This is how you do it, and you can do it just yeah. by being yeah. a pet yep. keeper. For sure. You don't have to be a breeder. Yeah. You don't have to work at a zoo. You could just yeah. do it with your little leopard gecko. Yeah, yeah. And totally. It still works. Yeah, and I think I, that's the thing too. There's a lot of like small content creators mm-hmm, who mm-hmm. don't know what they're doing, and it's mm-hmm. like if we can help give them advice, why not? You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because we had to figure it out. We're just <laughs> trial and error, just winging it. And like if we can share things that we yeah. learned or best practices, like would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I think doing that is literally the best thing because once you do that, like a lot of people start gatekeeping or like they just. Oh no. I had, no, no, I had, no. To, I had <laughs> to work hard I had to work hard to get my stuff so everybody else has to work hard and I've experienced like whenever you help somebody like you, you put this information out you help somebody I, you don't talk to this person for like five years you don't mm-hmm. see this person you probably never even meet them five years later they're at Animal Con and they go yeah. hey I actually started all my stuff because of what you said yeah, yeah. what the and that's mm-hmm. like the most special feeling. And that's, again, yeah. one of the reasons I love Animal Con so much. It's like people coming up. Like I had one guy come up and be like, hey, you you had some great advice on a panel last year. And I'm now I'm at this point. And I'm like, 
I'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's really cool. And and for the people listening, it feels surreal. Yes. Like, it doesn't feel like you did that. No. you just said it. Like, you, it just came to your head. You said yeah. it and you walked out. I'm, like, shocked. I'm, like, you were listening to me? <laughs> like, yeah. wow, thanks. I didn't yeah. realize anybody cared, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. I, I feel that every single day. Mm-hmm. Every single day somebody says something like that, I'm always, like, what just happened? Like, right. What? Like, I, okay. Like, whatever. Yeah. So it's something that you said earlier. A lot of the like reptile related podcasts, they are very breeder specific, very animal specific. Mm-hmm. So when when we started doing this, it you know we came at it as like we because we all at one point worked together, you know. And then oh cool, we I were, didn't even realize that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's neat. And we were all like at a you know at the lunch table every day, and we were just like debating with each other, laughing with each other, just like a hangout. Yelling. And then I, I had already started doing a podcast before that. Oh cool. And then it turned into what we're, what it is that we're doing now. Yeah. Um, so we started getting our influence actually from a podcast that Chuck and I uh, listened to called Flagrant. So it's more like uh, comedy related. Oh, cool. So I was like, there's nothing like that in the like reptile world. Yeah. Mm, you know, yep, yep. do you guys have like an influence like that? Or do you guys listen to a lot of podcasts? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a big reality TV girl. And so Which one shows? of I'm a big Bravo girl. Yeah. I love like Real Housewives. I, I'm actually not into the Real Housewives, really? shockingly enough, but Vanderpump, Vanderpump, yep. Vanderpump. I'm an OG Vanderpump yeah, yeah. watcher. So yeah. like it blew up in 2023, but yeah, I've yeah, been yeah, watching yeah. from the beginning, yeah. but Vanderpump summer house mm-hmm. and off of summer house spun this, this podcast called giggly squad. Mm-hmm. And it's just two girls Chit chat and mm-hmm. doing their thing, and so that was an inspiration for me when we were yeah, talking. Because we wanted to be more of a lifestyle. Yeah. Because a lot of reptile podcasts will do interviews, right? Which is yeah, fantastic. Because then you get the expertise, their perspective. You get to hear, you know, all their yeah. point of views and knowledge and everything, which is fabulous. But because it's just the two of us and we're not doing an interview style mm-hmm. podcast, mm-hmm. then this is a more lifestyle chit chatty yeah. yeah. kind of podcast. So that's what we were trying to embody with like Giggly Squad or like yeah. OG Call Her Daddy, right? Of like that yeah. kind of style yeah. where it's just like girls, you know, just chatting. Just more PG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's true. Way, that's way, true. way more. We, we love the vibe. Yeah. We're, we yeah. always say we're like PG-13. Yeah. 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 That's our... Yes. Sweet spot. Our, our brain. For sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I think all of that is so needed, especially like the breeder thing. It's like there is a copy and paste now. Well, the thing right? is, I feel like, like they're about to, they have to change. Yeah. And there's like an, an, there's an end to that yeah. because you can have the most amount of interviews about the same fucking totally Python, the same topic and then it's just like so what happens when you don't interview the right person now your numbers are not consistent mm-hmm. you know the interview base it's like I, I don't think it's it's great for this it's one, it's one recipe right yeah. and like yeah, if yeah. that's that's your sweet spot and you enjoy the interviews and the different perspectives yeah. I think that's fabulous mm-hmm. another thing that we do differently based off of other podcasts is all of our podcasts are pre-recorded mm-hmm. right they're yeah. like yeah. On a set, they're pre-recorded versus a lot of reptile podcasts choose to go the live mm-hmm. route where you can tune in. But that's cool too because mm-hmm. then you can have the community and live interaction yeah, with yeah. people. Mm-hmm. But that is a very different vibe than a pre-recorded mm-hmm. upload than yeah, a, totally. a live. So, there's, What's there's, one of the first things that I told you guys about their podcast when they started? You guys had this set and everything, and I was like, "We need that." Yeah, I was like, we need to get better cameras. We need, yeah. yeah. I really like the way that, that you guys do it. Oh, it's but awesome. you guys go like you'll be at like a park or something, which though, is cool. And then you'll That's just, a like, whole film, other vibe that is really podcast, neat to have like, with yeah. like. Yeah. A lake or river, or whatever yeah. it is, you know, like behind you. And I was yeah. like, well, that's cool. That's awesome, too. Yeah. That's its own set, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So. We literally do stuff like that. We talked about it for months before mm-hmm. we did it. And then we got the equipment. We did it. And before that, we we're literally catching lizards, snakes. <laughs> the other, Like one time we went out, we saw manatees, dolphins, sharks, Dude, um, snakes. See, like yeah. all, We don't all see that in her guest room. <laughs> any of that stuff. <laughs> any of that stuff. Like that is so cool. That Just the fact that you guys have access to that kind of like wildlife mm-hmm. is something Thing I'm yeah. forever yeah, jealous Yeah, but to take of. your podcast on the road, right? Yeah. And like, that's yeah. that's a really yeah. cool It just sucks when it's really hot. It, and Ooh. you're yeah. sweating. Oh. And humidity. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll take an air condition here. <laughs> over, yeah. over we, the, we, we, like our, we like our hair to look nice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he does too. Got <laughs> <laughs> long hair hiding in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I okay. didn't know that. Yeah, that's what okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'd show it. you guys my ID, but it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> no, you can spare us. That's yeah. <laughs> cool, man. So, Jeez. what's like? I guess what's the next step? What do you What are you guys up to now? You guys, uh, it's the end of the year. My big thing is I'm going to be a grandma. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Well. No, I'm kidding. A chameleon grandma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 a chameleon grandma. I, I intentionally put the pause just to look, <laughs> yeah. look on your face. I was like, me. Well, I was like what the hell All right. The look on your face is, no, so I'm expecting my very first clutch. So uh-huh. this is my first time ever breeding. Mm-hmm. I only really have chameleons. I have a crested gecko, but yeah. really chameleons are like, my Panthers? thing your yeah. bread and butter yeah yeah so neptune is my like very first reptile mm-hmm. he's six years old and like i've been wanting to breed him not only for the experience but also like to continue his legacy mm-hmm. to lead by example because we've seen a lot of changes in chameleon breeding we used to like keep them all together in like small groupings now we're individually raising chameleons you see a lot of chameleon eggs being sold at like shows and stuff so people are experiencing having a hatchling as their very first chameleon yeah, I see you. I had that experience. <laughs> I see in my you're first reptile lying show. Yeah. to me. I see the no. look on wow. That's Seriously? real. Yes. We see so you it can a lot. purchase a chameleon egg mm-hmm. and then you will hatch it and you will have a hatchling. And people will do this never having owned a reptile or a yeah. chameleon. Some people have experience, but I would say a lot of people, Most this is don't. their introduction to the hobby. So I'm like, this is a great opportunity for me to be able to share. Here's how you can raise a hatchling. I'm obviously going to have, I have 25 eggs, so I'll have more than one, but, you know, lead by example of showing people how they can, you know, go through that experience. So they've officially laid their clutch. I am now waiting six to nine months, which is usually how long it takes to incubate panther chameleon eggs. So that's my big news is my breeding journey and having babies and eggs and like going through all that for the very first time. That's crazy. I the <laughs> so hung up on the Ch- yeah. Chucky has so many Chucky has that. so many opinions. I can't believe this. that. That's wild, man. Are they are chameleon eggs uh if you flip them, do they die? Yeah. And they stood what yeah. is going <laughs> on? After a certain period of time, within like the first two weeks they can move around, but like once the embryo has like attached It's attached like every other yes. reptile. Yes. Yep. No. But they no. put them in these like we little have deli lots of cups too. with like little sponges. <laughs> it's on our list of it episode is. topics it is. To, it is. to talk about. We'll be discussing it. <laughs> because right right now in the reptile hobby, no one else is doing this with other species. Yeah. It's like it's only just chameleons, chameleons for and there's like reason. there's one guy that like started it and there's a couple other people who are now doing it as well. So for better or worse, it's in the it's in the hobby, it's in the trade, it's in yeah. the chameleon world. So like I said, if I can like help well, I would not recommend buying an egg if you've bought it already. If, like, if you've already me, made I will, that mistake. I'll help you out, right? Yeah. Like, make sure you are set up for success. Yeah. It reminds me of sea monkeys. Oh, oh growing sea monkeys. your own sea That's monkeys. That's such a great... Why yeah. That's a 90s the, kids reference. Uh, the reason why it's chameleons is because that's the one that people know. That's the one that the public knows about. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, I've it, met many people who hate lizards... Don't do anything with geckos. Don't do anything. But with why like are people doing it with snake eggs or snakes or anything? Right, like someone had to be the first to. Yeah, and for the general public, that. there's two reptiles that they don't hate. They don't hate chameleons. They don't hate turtles. That's such a true point. Yeah, I'm surprised they're not doing that with turtles. And because turtles can incubate at room temp. Don't incubate. Chameleon. I should not have said <laughs> that. Chameleons. Why you say that? Yeah, chameleons. <laughs> turtles incubate like you're, at you're room temp. Problem. <laughs> They can't be in those boxes for too long. Nothing can be in those boxes. So anyways, not to get into the chameleon egg controversy, but I'm saying it's an opportunity not only for me to, and I mentor hundreds of people, like they are hatching out their egg and they're like, SOS, what do I do? You know, and so being able to experience it firsthand and help people through that is like, I think going to be really good. Yeah. And also giving the perspective as a chameleon breeder too, because not to like hype up your channel or anything, but like you did have some, you know, incidents happen in the breeding and not a lot of people talk about the injuries that can come with breeding yeah, and different things. Yeah, and the things. risk and so everything else. Yeah. You're being like very open with that. And I think that's just a really educational good yeah, point. Just mm-hmm. to show what it's, what really goes down. Yeah. yeah. Um, fun fact. Did you know there's chameleons close to here? Panthers. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Panthers. They literally are there and it could get like 40 degrees. That's and crazy. They still breed. Oh yeah, chameleons yeah. are hardy. Yeah. It's insane. People say they're like so fragile, Mm-mm. right? And all of this, and it's like if you take care of them, just like with any animal, not mm-hmm. even wrapped any animals, then of course they're not going to do well. I just say the margin for error with chameleons is much smaller yeah. than other reptiles. Totally. But they're yeah. They're, I've they're also awesome. experienced the like chameleons that are kept like very specifically, specific temperatures and all of those things. If you change those things after a long period of time, then it, that one gets affected a lot more. So I kept mm-hmm. like captive born veiled chameleons and then I've kept uh, Walcott chameleons from Florida. And the Florida ones just survive in anything, like 40 degrees, so crazy. 100 degrees, like it did not care. The captive born one in the same environment ended Couldn't. up passing, did not. So what know. I've heard, and I would love to hear your guys' experience yeah. being like in Florida and stuff, is that the Walcott 
fails when they're taken from the wild and then put in captivity, you usually have a really hard time adjusting, adjusting from like the artificial UVB versus the natural UVB and then the temperature parameters and obviously case by case basis. But I've heard mm -hmm. from other keepers that like wild caught Florida chameleons specifically have a really hard time acclimating to being in captivity. I, I would agree in the fact that like indoors, the enclosures that we provide are usually very small. Mm -hmm. And a lot of movement will freak them out a lot more. So that mm -hmm. I feel okay. like the reason is just the, the stress. And I say that because I have the same experience. I, ha I have different species of uh, nitinols. And it's the same thing. The nitinols that I get here in Florida, if I put them in the same size enclosure as a captive born, every time I pass, he's scared. He's going to run into the mesh mm -hmm. and beat oh. himself up. Same thing with the chameleon. He's trying to get out. Got it. He's going from a tree to your enclosure. Right. Now. Uh, two years ago, me and one of my friends went down to South Florida. We got 64 veiled chameleons and we built a greenhouse and we released them into the greenhouse and they're all still alive. Cool. Oh, wow. So they so did the, the space. Maybe that's it's, the it's issue. The spacing. It's that's the so spacing. interesting. And like, if you give them enough to like hide from you, cause if you don't, they're going to Oy. be digging and trying to Stressed bash. Out. Exactly. If yeah. they can hide from you. And I mean like really foliage to the point you can't barely put your hand through. Because if not, then it's a wild animal. It's used to getting away from people, getting on the other side Fight of the branch. Fight or flight, yeah, exactly. totally. So if you put them in an enclosure as big as it is, it might look big to us or to a captive-born animal that's used to it. But to them, that does, that's nowhere near the tree he was living on. No, no. of course, yeah. So I feel like that's probably true with most wild-caught animals. Yeah, it's, that's an interesting It's yeah, a lot that's more a great stress. Point. And the UVB, of course, but... I, I don't really think it's... I think the animal itself can take the UVB, the lower UVB and the lighting and everything you put in there, but the enclosure itself, it will God. not well, be Well, so I was that. curious because mm -hmm. I haven't experienced it firsthand. That's just from what I've heard from like... Yeah, yeah that's and a stuff. good but perspective. And getting yeah. them to eat as well because the veiled chameleons that we get, as soon as we get them and we see their poop, guess what? There's barely insects. Mm -hmm. We see fruits. We see uh, Brazilian pepper the most. The places that I go to, there's Brazilian pepper and there's Brazilian pepper growing in it. Wow. It's in their poop. Their poop is literally balls of Brazilian pepper. Wow. So with um, veal chameleons eating f fresh fruits and vegetables, the idea is it's creating this refuge. So like in the wild, they're eating a lot of flies, which are mm -hmm. like soft bodied like bugs versus mm -hmm. in captivity, we have a lot of exoskeleton mm -hmm. bugs. So in the wild, they're eating fruits and vegetables and things like that to help process and digest to um. give some refuge so their stomachs to pass it. So it's hardwired in their DNA to eat these fruits and vegetables. So it may not even be that they're seeking out the peppers, but it's because that's how they're programmed to because of the diet that they would normally experience wow. in the wild. Yeah. Fun, wow. no, fun facts about chameleons. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> you get her going. It's yeah. a whole other thing. <laughs> but a lot of people People are like, oh, like veils need to be offered for some vegetables yeah. in captivity. Well, like that's not the case at all. Like they eat it in the, it's like the leaves usually in the mm -hmm. wild to, like I said, kind of allow some roughage in their stomachs to digest. Otherwise mm -hmm. they're just, it would just be mush. That's just like yeah. kind of passing mm -hmm. through them. So, wow. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that. I, I will facts. say I did have a wild one and a passion fruit grew through the enclosure because I keep them, I kept them outside. Right. They ate the passion fruit and died. Oh, yeah, like that's not good. Leaves. Yeah, the leaves, the leaves are poisonous. But I didn't I know. Have, like, I wouldn't have realized that they were poisonous. That's fascinating. Yeah, the, well, the fruit itself, the outside is not the inside, but mm. the leaves, the vine itself. And okay. then I saw the bite marks all over the leaves, and then I started looking into wow. it, and it's poisonous, and it killed my chameleons. Oh, but it was, it was very that. interesting that the the wild animal was still used to. Yeah. You know, well, and captive, aura. captive red ones will take down like a whole pothos plant like inside their enclosure. And so I'm curious, how many generations of breeding captive bred animals will it take before they stop eating the plant matter? Because again, yeah. in captivity, we feed stuff with exoskeleton, so they wouldn't need to be eating all the plant matter to help digest it. Panther chameleons yeah. don't eat plants the same way that veils do. So yeah. just a little little thought so to interesting. leave you with but Reptiles that's crazy what's, man <laughs> that's what's new with me or what's upcoming <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll pass it over to you i am still very much in like upgrade phase so i'm currently starting my plans for my yellow anacondas build i'm really hoping to get something set up with underwater viewing for his water area which is going to be super cool so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a big eight foot enclosure. So that's a big project I'm working on. I'm also working on upgrading nearly all of mine. And so it's, 
it's an undertaking. So working on that, but I'm also really hoping we kind of talked about this recently, but I am hoping to start doing a little bit more in the YouTube space. We'll see. Long form is usually not my forte, but I would like to be doing a little bit more and being at Animal Con is very inspiring for that. Yeah. yeah so with all these people. I know. There's some maniacs out there. <laughs> Straight up maniacs that know like every detail of yes. a video. I'm like, dude, go away. <laughs> you scare me. You yeah. scare me. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, you guys want to let people know where to find you? Yeah, absolutely. Lissa's Lizards everywhere. I will say right now I'm mostly on TikTok, but also Instagram very much so, and hopefully soon to be more on YouTube. So, Yep, yeah. and you can find me, Neptune the Chameleon, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and I do have a website, mm. NeptuneTheChameleon.com, and you can check out the podcast, The Wild Type Podcast. We're on all things social, YouTube, yes. you name it, we're there. Cool. Also, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the things. Anywhere you can get a podcast, <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having us yeah. on here, though. We've been looking forward to this. We've been wanting to chat with you guys for yeah. a long time, so we finally Appreciate made it happen. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say next year, Animal Con, if we all do make it over here, maybe we can do like a joint like podcast booth. Yeah, that like would be a cool idea. That stuff. would be cool. I love yeah. that. That was sweet. Really all right, cool. this was the Reptiles with Podcast.